Hello everyone. I'm finally back with the next lesson. I'm sorry it's taken so long, but work got very busy for several months, and then after that I was very burnt out for several months. Now I've finally gotten back the energy and focus so I can actually do some more of these side projects again, and I want to get back into the lessons. I've got some cool new ideas. If you've ever seen functional programming, I want to start applying that to how we're writing the C sharp code. But first we need to wrap up a few things from the previous lessons. So this one will cover making the monster data load from an XML file, similar to how we had the location data load from an XML file. The first step is to open up the solution and we're going to go into the monsters directory underneath the images and we need to change the properties of the monster objects. So just select the three PNG files and select the properties tab and change your build action to none and your copy to output directory to copy always. So this way when we build the solution the PNG files will be copied over for us to read. The next step is to create a new class in the engine project in the models folder and call it item percentage. This will be the class that we use to store what the odds are of a monster having a particular loot item. So if you want a rat to have a 50% chance of having a rat tail, you'll put the item ID of whatever rat tail is and the percentage is 50. If you want them to have a 20% chance of having a rat tooth, you would put in the rat tooth ID and the percentage would be 20. And we'll add all these up and this will be how we determine what loot to give out when the player kills a monster. And this is a simple public class, item percentage, we have our two properties, the ID and the percentage, and we have our constructor that takes in ID and percentage values as parameters and sets them to the properties. Next we're going to modify the monster class. We've got a lot of changes in here because previously we were instantiating the monster objects in the monster factory get monster function that instantiated a new monster object and populated the loot for that monster. Now what we're going to do is have a base monster object, which is going to be the, be the one that has all the values we read from the XML file. And then we're going to call our monster get new instance function, which will create a clone of that object. So we'll have a standard default monster from our XML file. And then when we go, when the player moves to a location and we need that particular monster, we call get new instance. It figures out the loot table. It gives us a new monster object with its full hit points, its full gold, everything ready for the player to fight. So we'll start by creating this new underscore loot table variable, which is a list of item percentages. And this is going to have that list that we talked about before of what items the monster has and what percentage chance there is of that particular monster having that particular loot item. We've got our standard properties up here, our constructor on lines 15 through 25 that we takes in the parameters and sets the values in the base class or in the, in this class as properties. We have a new function here from 27 to 34 add item to loot table. So when we read the XML file for the first time and need to populate this base object with all the possible loot items that the monster could have, this is the function we're going to call on that monster object. And all it does is if that particular item, if something with that ID exists in the loot table, we're going to remove it from the loot table first, just so we don't have duplicates. And then we'll add that item with a new item percentage object showing what the percentage is that the monster has that item and what the item is. And then there's the important function on 36 through 56 that's get new instance. This is where we're going to create our clone of that base monster object that we build. When we read the XML file, we have our standard giant rat. And when the player goes to a location where we need them to fight a giant rat, then we're going to call this get new instance and that's going to create the instance of the giant rat that they're going to fight. And we need to do this get new instance because we want to have slightly different loot each time. And if we just have one 
giant rat object sitting out here in our world, then the first time the player kills it, the next time we go in, so next time the player goes to a location to fight a giant rat, the giant rat's going to still have zero hit points. So we can't have just one giant rat, our base one. We need to have a clone of that giant rat that they can fight. All this get new instance function does is instantiates a new monster object, passing in all of its property values from the base monster. Then it goes through the base monster's loot table, adds that to the new monster's loot table, and then we use a random number generator to see if the item percentage is less than the percentage listed for that particular item in the loot table. If so, we're going to add that item, that loot item, to the monster's inventory. So this way when the player defeats it, they can actually get that loot. The next step is in the engine project in the game data folder, we're going to create a monsters.xml file. And this is very similar to the location XML file. We have our opening monsters node and our closing node down here on 21. Then we have our three monsters. We've got our snake, our rat on 9 to 14, and our giant spider on 15 to 20. And on the monster node, we have the monster ID, its name, its maximum hit points, the standard weapon that it uses, and then we have, like here on 4 through 7, we have the loot items showing which particular loot item this monster could have and what percentage chance they have of actually having that loot when the player defeats them. So you can copy these values from this XML file into your XML file. Just remember to go to the properties of the monster.xml file and set the copy to output directory to copy always, because when we build this, we need to make sure that the monster data gets copied over so the player can actually use it. The next step is to modify the monster factory, and this is going to be very similar to how the location factory works. On line 12, we have our game data file name, the game data monsters.xml. On line 14, we have our base monsters list, so this is when we read the XML file, and we create that base monster for each of these monsters, this is where we're going to store it. On line 16 through 33, we have the static function that's kind of a constructor for this static class. It gets run the first time you call anything inside the monster factory class, and this is what's going to check to see if the game data file exists. If it does, it's going to read it into an XML document. It's going to get the root image path, which if we go back to our monsters XML, we see this monsters, we've got the root image path tells us where the subdirectory where all of our monster PNG files will be. And then we say load the monsters from the nodes, which is the function 35 through 65 which just basically goes through each of these monster nodes and gets the attributes and the loot items, just like we did with the location factory. And then finally on line 67 through 70, we have a static function called getMonster that takes in a monster ID. And what this is going to do is when the player moves to a location and we need to get a rat monster or a snake or whatever, we're going to call the monster factory get monster with the ID, which we have from the location. That's going to look in our base monsters list, find the first monster where the ID matches, and then it's going to call the get new instance function, which is this new function in the monster class that instantiates the new monster to fight. So the player has a new giant spider or snake or rat to fight. And the final change we need to make is in the main window.xaml on lines 148 to 149. This is where we have the image control that's going to display the monster image. And we need to change it so that the source is using our converter of the file to bitmap converter. So that way we can actually display the image in the screen. Now that we have the changes in here, let's run the game and see to make sure it works. And we'll move to a location with the monster. 
start to fight it. So we see we've got our snake here with four hit points. We defeated that one. We've got a new snake with four hit points. Both times we got one snake skin, so the loot may just randomly be, be, be repeating. Let's fight another couple of snakes. Okay, here we fought one and we didn't get any snake skin. So it looks like our snakes are actually creating new instances each time it's getting current hit points four when we fight a new one. And we're getting slightly different loot. Now we've got the game so that we can add more monsters by just modifying that monsters.xml file and we don't need to change the code and recompile it. In the description below the video, I'll have a link to the support page. Please go there to get a copy of the source code or if you have any questions. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next lesson, which will definitely happen much more quickly than this one did.